In these slides, we will review some of the information presented in the text and go into more detail on the design basis threat. A number of threats exist that may pose a security risk to nuclear facilities. A threat assessment requires that the competent authority assess the possible intentions, motivations, and physical capabilities of likely adversaries. The competent authority is the entity with the legal or invested responsibility of ensuring that facilities are adequately protected. The adversary threat spectrum is used to answer two questions. Who is the threat and what level of severity does the threat pose? The process of developing the threat spectrum will involve a number of agencies and ministries in a state in order to develop a consensus threat spectrum. For example, in the United States, the threat assessment will include information from the intelligence community, which includes the FBI, CIA, DEA, and Armed Forces Intelligence, as well as state and local governments and law enforcement agencies. The categories of potential threats can be divided into outsiders, insiders, and collusion groups. Outsiders may be terrorists, criminals, protesters, vandals, spies, or psychotics. Insiders are individuals with access to the facility or knowledge of operations of security systems at the facility. Depending upon their responsibilities at the facility, an insider may already have detailed knowledge of security systems or direct access to materials. Either way, their access to the facility gives them a number of unique opportunities that they can attempt to take advantage of. Insiders are usually defined as either passive, active nonviolent, or active violent. A passive insider will just provide information to a group of outsiders. An active nonviolent insider will assist with the adversaries through disabling alarms or facilitating the access into the facility. An active violent insider will participate directly in a violent attack. Collusion groups are typically the greatest concern because they combine the capabilities of outsider groups with the intimate knowledge of an insider. Collusion groups are typically limited to a single insider. Insider analysis is a complex process that is beyond the scope of this course, but for more information see the recommended literature referenced at the beginning of this course by Mary Lynn Garcia or Betty Berenger. Other information needed to define a threat include the motivations, targets of interest, tactics, intelligence gathering means, expected number and group, equipment and tools, transportation, weapons and explosives, technical skills and knowledge, financial resources, and the potential for collusion with an insider. Once all this information about the adversary is collected, it can be summarized in a table like the one shown here, which is useful when deriving a design basis threat from the threat assessment. The design basis threat is the attributes and characteristics of potential insider and or external adversaries who might attempt unauthorized removal of nuclear material or sabotage against which a nuclear security system is designed and evaluated. It is derived from the threat assessment. The design basis threat has a number of uses. The threat that must be defended against has been meticulously defined in the design basis threat. This allows a basis for testing and evaluating the security system and components of the security system. It also limits the adversary to reasonable and credible capabilities which avoid unnecessary security measures that would represent an unnecessary cost to the facility or competent authority. Also, by providing a specific definition of the threat, the DBT can be used as a testable basis for licensing. The licensing authority can require the security system to perform to a minimum standard versus the DBT for the facility to be allowed to operate. It is important to keep in mind that the DBT provides the threat that the facility must protect against. Obviously, threats will exist that are outside the DBT. For example, a facility would not be expected to be able to defend against another country's military. The threat environment is constantly changing and evolving, and it is important that the competent authority maintain the DBT. The DBT can be reevaluated at some defined time interval, for example, yearly. 
Also, significant events may prompt the competent authority to reevaluate the current DBT. For example, the events of September 11th demonstrated a high level of financing, coordination, and a new capability, which was using a commercial airplane as a weapon, which posed a new threat, and as a result, the security measures for commercial air travel increased significantly to protect against this threat.